in order to have a great serve, which is both powerful and consistent, you want to have a consistent ball toss where the ball is in the path of the swing, where you can almost serve blindfolded. Let's take a look at that one more time. So if you're lacking consistency in your ball toss, there are five things that you want to be aware of. The first is the height of the toss. The second is the arm structure needed to prevent too much elbow or wrist movement. The third is developing a good, clean toss release where the ball's not spinning or rolling off your hand. The fourth is the legs, being aware of what your legs are doing and what they should be doing. And lastly, the fifth thing is where you should be looking to ensure that you have the most amount of balance so that your body is not negatively affecting what's happening with the ball toss. Before we move on, let's first discuss where the ideal contact point should be on your first serve, whether it be a flat serve or a slice serve. So the contact should be out in front inside the baseline, and if you drop a line from the ball, it should be in line with your hitting shoulder, and for developing players and club players, approximately in line with the front foot. Now, if you draw a line representing the arm and then the racket, it creates what we call a power triangle. This allows you to more efficiently swing up on edge, pronate, and internally rotate the shoulder. Now, let's go over the five things you want to be aware of if your ball toss is inconsistent. Now, the first thing you want to be aware of is the height of your toss. Now, you may have heard you want to toss the ball high for more time. But that's the exact opposite of the truth. When you toss the ball low, you actually have more time because the ball's moving slower, so it's in the window of your strings much longer. Vic Braden did studies on this and proved you have nine times more time when you hit the ball at the apex. So in other words, the ball, as it's moving up towards the apex, it's going to be slowing down, it's going to stop for a moment, and it's going to begin to accelerate on the way down. So it's in this window much longer than a falling ball. Now, research has shown and you still want the ball to fall a little bit because you want those opposite forces. When the ball is falling and the, the swing path is going upwards, it actually applies a small degree of forward rotation of the ball, increasing your margin for safety. Now, a couple of things happens too. When you toss the ball really high, people tend to go too quickly over here, which can often throw off their hitting arm. They often engage the body and the legs, and that's too many things to try to coordinate. And very often, when you toss the ball high, you have more variance, so the ball could get further away from you, so you have a greater spread of where your contact point could be. So in order to have more consistency, you want to toss the ball relatively low. So generally, you want to be tossing it just above your outstretched arm and racket, anywhere from 6 to 12 inches, thereabouts, but you want to be relatively low so the ball's moving slower, and it's much easier to time, but also it's more easy to control, right? So one thing you can think of, a lot of people go too quick right here, is imagine that you have a little bit of pressure on your arm, a little bit of resistance, and as you're lifting the arm up, you're applying that resistance so you have a nice controlled arm action over here. And always think you're just putting the ball up there or just placing the ball up there. Forget about the word toss, because that can often be very deceiving. The second thing you want to be aware of is the arm structure. And very often, players we have a bent arm like this, or they use the wrist. And when you add these joints, it can really make timing more difficult, and once again, lead to inconsistencies. Also, sometimes players will start with a bent arm and finish with a straight arm. So things you want to be aware of, you want to have a nice straight arm where you are now lifting from the shoulder. Now, one thing can help you prevent using too much elbow or wrist is how you hold the ball. So instead of holding the ball with the palm up, where you can now engage these joints, you want to think of holding the ball more like a champagne flute or a glass of water, ice cream cone, whichever one you like to think about. So your, your, your hand is like this. Now I do find some players, they find it a little bit easier to go halfway between the palm up and that champagne flute idea and go somewhere in between. That's enough to try to eliminate these joints from being overactive. Another thing that can help is what gets your arm to bend is the bicep muscle contracting. So you can focus on contracting the tricep. Now be very careful, you don't want to lock the arm, you want to have a straight arm with a soft joint. But if you gently contract the tricep muscle, it may help prevent the bicep from contracting and getting you to bend that arm. 
The third thing is you want to develop a nice clean release and that starts with how you hold the ball. So getting back to that champagne flute idea, you want to ideally be holding the ball like this, like a glass of water or an ice cream cone, but ideally you want to be holding it to, you've got your first knuckle, your second knuckle, try to hold in the second knuckle right here where the ball's not quite in the palm of your hand because what can happen is a lot of players hold the ball in the palm and the ball ends up rolling off the fingertips and it starts to spin out of control. So generally you want to hold it more to about the second knuckle, either with, with you know, four fingers on the ball, if you have a small hand, possibly five, and you want to hold it more like this. Because once again, when you turn the, when the, turn the hand up, not only can the wrist get involved, but the ball tends to roll off the fingertips. Then what you want to do is you want to hold the ball up about eye level, with your arm is straight, and simply work on a clean release where the ball leaves all your fingers at the same time, kind of like this. You see how I really spread the fingers. You don't want the ball kind of lingering and rolling off one finger. So just practice that at eye level, arm is straight, simply just open the hand by spreading the fingers like this. And you do that over and over. And then when you toss the ball up, remember going slower, like there's some resistance, simply open the hand around about eye level and keep the fingers really spread. That way it's going to stop the ball getting stuck to one of the fingers, spinning and losing control. So in other words, to have a nice clean release, hold the ball more like that champagne flute or glass of water. At eye level, you want to just simply open the hand, spread the fingers and keep the fingers spread so that you don't have to worry about any excess movement with the fingers or the wrist. And ideally, when you, when, when you toss the ball, you want to have the least amount of rotation as possible because we find that helps you with toss consistency. Now the fourth thing to be aware of are the legs. And what are your legs doing when you're tossing the ball? And a lot of times this relates to having an excessively high toss is that we tend to get the whole body involved. Now a couple things can go wrong. Number one, when you have so many segments to try to time and coordinate, that's when you can have inconsistencies of where you end up uh, placing the ball. Second thing is, is that a lot of times when players engage the legs to toss the ball, they get behind in the kinetic chain. So when it gets to this point in the swing, their body is up, where instead, when you get to this point here, before the racket crosses your head, your knee should be bent and your body should be coiled. You should be in a loaded position. But if you get here, then what happens is they tend to go down with the racket drop and then they get into trouble when they are missinking or mistiming the kinetic chain. So what I suggest you do is you want to start with your legs relatively straight. Now, some players, when they start the toss, and I do recommend you start much lower, close to your legs, so you don't have to really fling it. You can just gently lift the arm up. But some players, when they start the toss, we see them begin to bend. Other players, we find that the legs are relatively straight, and once they release the ball, we see the majority of the knee bend happening. Okay, so you want to find something that is comfortable, that works for you. Some players do start with the legs bent, but be very careful because the tendency is to then go up with the ball. So my recommendation, start with the legs relatively straight so you can start to bend as that ball is traveling up towards the apex. Now the fifth thing to be aware of is where are you looking when you're tossing the ball? Now you will see a variety of different things on the Pro Tour, but if you are having difficulties with the toss, Remember, your head represents your balance. So the more head movement you have, the more your body is moving, which can then also affect your arm or your body, your arm, and then ultimately the ball. So ideally what you want to do is you want to be looking at where you want to be contacting the ball. Okay, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll actually follow the ball up with their head. You can just see how my weight is shifting here too much before the release. Right? or they tend to look straight up and what that does, that brings the toss back behind them. So instead you want to be looking more forward to where you want to contact with the ball. So my suggestion is, is that before you begin lifting the tossing arm up from the shoulder, is that you're looking at where you want to contact the ball. That way you have less movement going on and it's much easier to control the toss. So I'm going to start like this. I want to look at where I want to contact the ball before beginning my service motion. The other thing to be aware of when you coil down, this also goes hand in hand. When you're looking there at where you're going to contact the ball, you're coiling as if you're inside a barrel so that your shoulders, your sides aren't touching the barrel 
and that way you're coiling down rather than leaning back or too far forward and that can also affect what happens to the ball. So make sure you're looking at where you want to contact the ball. If you're having difficulty with this, you want to toss and you can keep your head nice and still. So those are the five things that there to be aware of. If you are struggling with your toss, I recommend number one, check the toss height. If you're tossing too high, very often you're doing too many things, but it makes it more difficult to time that. The ball's moving faster, but also now you have to time your swing to be perfect. And very often people develop hitches and pauses so that they can then time the ball. What you want to do is you want to time the toss to your swing. Remember, anytime there's an angular change, chasing the ball or a stop in your motion, you will lose racket head speed. The second thing is you want to have a nice straight tossing arm. You want to eliminate too many extra movements from the elbow and the wrist. So hold the ball more like a champagne flute or a glass of water, ice cream cone, whichever one uh, you, you like to think about. You can also think of keeping the, 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 the tricep slightly engaged, contracted. Remember, it's a straight arm, soft joint. Don't lock the arm out. Start lower so you have time to get the ball up there. Think, put the ball up there. Don't think toss. It can be very deceiving. Third thing, you want to have a nice clean release. So how are you holding onto the ball? I recommend you got your first knuckle, your second knuckle, holding the second knuckle, not quite in the palm. And you want to hold again, more like that champagne flute or somewhere in between. That will also, number one, develop, uh, eliminate too much wrist and elbow movement, but also promote a clean release so that you can simply open the hand where the ball will simply travel up with the least amount of rotation and least amount of fingers which can get in the way. The fourth thing, you want to make sure that you're not tossing with your legs. Remember that goes hand in hand. The higher we want to toss, we tend to engage the whole body. It's too many body segments to coordinate and that's where you're going to have inconsistencies. It also puts you behind or out of sync with the kinetic chain. And then lastly, balance. If you find you're off balance when you're tossing, I recommend that you're looking at where you want to strike the ball before you begin the toss. And that way, the only thing that's really moving before you release the ball is simply your shoulder. You're lifting from the shoulder with a straight arm, and then you can add more knee bend and you can start to turn. But those are recommendations if you are having difficulties with your toss. And I do challenge you to the blindfold challenge. So work on your toss. I look forward to seeing your videos, your comments below, and let me know if you have any questions. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your tennis friends. Thank you for watching.